This is a fictional Mindbender. Deadpool and Wolverine was a great movie and easily in my top five favorite comic book movies of all time. But my favorite moment, in all honesty, for that particular movie, and by far the most surprising, according to everyone who I was with, was the appearance of Wesley Snipes' Blade. There was literally a collective holy shit cry out from the crowd, which was then followed by a loud cheer that I haven't seen nor heard in theaters since Spider-Man No Way Home when the original Spider-Man came out of that portal. Everyone knows about the development hell issues that the MCU has been having trying to bring on the latest incarnation of the character by actor Mahershala Ali. It's certainly frustrating because I do want to see that. I mean, how hard is it to write a story about a kick-ass vampire hunter who kills vampires? Seriously. But this video isn't about that. It's about why Blade is one of my favorite characters from Marvel. Now, Blade wasn't the first black superhero to grace the movie screen. That honor belongs to 1997's Spawn. But the reason why I prefer Blade to Spawn was actually two reasons. And the first was how much I identified with him as a person. In the 90s, I was very much an outsider in college. Never felt like I belonged anywhere nor to any particular community. And it wasn't because I was black because at the time, most people seemed to view black men as urban game bangers with nothing better to do than drink Hennessy, fuck around, and get high. And to be fair, there were definitely many who did fit that description. But I didn't. I was a nerd, quite frankly, into the most obscure little things that today are considered popular and mainstream. Comic books, sci-fi, fantasy, martial arts and many sciences you know stuff that wasn't going to win you a date anytime soon but i was primarily devoted to bettering myself as a person having been bullied and left alone for so long and my way of dealing with that and following my nerdy passions was through study martial arts and trying to build my body so when the scene comes up in the first Blade movie where he and the woman he just rescued are escaping an ambush in the subway and she comments to him that he's one of the vampires, he replies in a wounded gruff voice, No, I'm something else. And that moment really hit home for me. Because with the exception of Whistler, Blade has no community. He has no friends. He's a ronin with no loyalty to any master but solely to his personal quest for vengeance and people who seem to earn his respect, which <coughs> isn't many, quite frankly. Because essentially, Blade was no Superman or even Batman for that matter. He's not killing vampires for the greater good or to save people despite what people say about him. He's killing them because he blames them for his birth as an outsider and for his life of isolation he's had to live. And even when he does try to join others, which is still kind of reluctant, it often does not work out. They all come in all full of themselves, thinking they're badasses on his level and whatnot, but none of them, or at least almost none of them, make it to the end. And Blade is the only one left standing, and again, alone. Now, the second reason why I love the character so much was Wesley Snipes' physicality that he brought to the role. In the 90s, besides being noted as an impressive actor, he was also a dedicated martial artist, something which few actors during the time were or at least opened up about. And this showed in all of his action movies back then, but none more so than Blade. Even if the plot was complete bullshit, they were worth watching, and yes, that even includes Blade Trinity, just to watch Snipes fluently and brutally kick someone's ass. It was empowering for people like me. Something that many people like in their franchises today, actually. That an outsider didn't have to be seen as weak or be bullied all the time. But at the same time, didn't have to become the bully and what you hated most. This really helped me keep my passion for the martial arts during my college years and 
actually even developed a reputation where people thought I was potentially psychotic because no one picked on me at that time. Since the MCU kicked off over a decade ago though, I think the legacy of Blade kind of got lost in the glam and blitz of the MCU. Comic book movies were now celebrated staples of mainstream society, rather than outliers for a few fringers. Kids and adults were dressing up as their favorite heroes, spending money and a lot of time into making these honestly great costumes. It was wonderful to watch and even be a part of if you were. However, many of them didn't know or barely knew the role Blade played in, in keeping the MCU relevant or getting it to that place. They may have known something about it as maybe a old 90s movie that was like a few years old and that Wesley Snipes was in it, but not much more than that. Nothing that really hit home. Nothing that really was just like, oh shit, that movie? And here's the irony of this situation. And it's that nothing showed this discrepancy better than when, and again, I still can't get over the irony of this, when Black Panther came out in 2018. Now, don't get it twisted. Black Panther was great in and of itself and was a major milestone for seeing black people in cinema as leading comic book movies into successful money-making blockbusters. And it was successful both nationally and globally. And honestly, even the Blade movies were not that successful in comparison. Not gonna lie about that. And yet, it still irked me to hear people say that Black Panther was the first black superhero on screen. It was like, I know people who have short memories and whatnot, but what the fuck, seriously. And it was good to see not just myself, but many others quickly defending Blade's position in cinema history in the face of what was becoming trendy. And again, yes, Black Panther was a great movie. But Black Panther was not the first black superhero on screen, nor was he the first black superhero to be successful on screen. That was why I was so glad to see Blade again in the Deadpool and Wolverine movie to bring this back up to date. And even more glad to see audiences of all ages and generations finally acknowledging its legacy and Wesley Snipes' place and importance in the MCU. And it's as Ryan Reynolds himself said on his Instagram that there is no Fox Marvel Universe nor MCU without Blade first creating the market. End quote. So, whatever happens with Mahershala Ali's character for Blade, which I do hope that Marvel gets their shit together for that because I do want to see that version of Blade, he's a good actor. It still changes nothing for the OG version of Blade from the 90s. And I'm glad that he's finally getting the respect that's due to him after so many years. But you tell me, do you think Blade is comparable to Black Panther in terms of its influence on black superhero characters in cinema? Does it even matter to you? And are you excited to hopefully see the new version of Blade come out? Or do you think it's even to come out at all? Let me know in the comments below, but this is the Fictional Mindbender. Y'all have a good day.